Rooks are like airborne hooligans. They travel around in mobs, ready to give others a hard time. They've got that, are you looking at my bird, sort of attitude. Corvids present a variety of problems. When lambs start popping out of ewes, crows will happily start eating them before they're fully born. Corvids damage crops, and all of them, magpies and jackdaws included, prey on songbirds, their eggs and their young. Farmers need to keep the numbers down. So Andy, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Tell me a little bit about this crow roost here. Right, well I was in here one evening and all of a sudden this racket and mass of crows appeared above my head and started just falling into the branches. And just amazing sight. So we came back with the air rifles the next night and had a ball. So, so just how many um, crows come into this, this route of an evening? I would say there's probably about 20,000. That's 20,000, that's yeah. a lot. Just crows or? There's carrion crows, uh, rooks, ravens and jackdaws. Tonight we're in Fife, Scotland, hoping to ambush some unruly rooks as they flood in to roost. And when they arrive, you certainly know about it. Andy helps out farmers during the lambing season and has seen firsthand the damage corvids can do. So how do you know that it's a crow that's, that's caused the death of the lamb and it's not stillborn? When you come across the lamb, if there's no blood at all around about the eyes, that's been stillborn. Or it's passed away, perished through cold or whatever. If there's red blood around the eyes, okay, that means it's still alive and the blood was actually non-congealed, so it's running. So it was definitely alive when it was killed. So the, the argument that some people say, you know, that, that they're already dead and it's bad management from farmers, etc., it, it's rubbish. So we just heard from Andy, up to 20,000 birds roost here every night, and I can hear them in the background. There's a cacophony going on, probably about 100 yards off to our right-hand side, so we're going to find a spot now and, and see what comes in. Sitting, waiting under these trees is thrilling. Witnessing this number of birds skimming the treetops is incredibly exciting. For a chance of shooting one, it's important to keep low and still. As they settle, they're backlit against the fading light, perfect for getting them lined up in the crosshairs. I can use the Night Sight NS200 unit for spotting them, but the only bird you're allowed to use night vision or lamps for shooting in the UK is the feral pigeon. I knock some birds off their perch and they land with a satisfying thud. The Daystate Mark IV IS I'm using tonight is capable of making some nice long shots. The trickiest bit of the evening is finding these birds in the dark. Crikey, well this is a, this is a good sized bird. You can see these, uh, why well, there's such, so much of a problem pecking out the, out the eyes of young lambs. But uh, shot this nice and cleanly through the trees, about 25, 30 yards, elevated shot, so took the shot uh, straight into the chest. Plenty of mass there in the bird, quite a small neck, big head. But they're, they're moving around quite a lot in the trees, so you've got to make sure your shots. I'm using a, a Daystate Mark IV, uh, 22 FAC calibre. It's uh, shooting about 30 foot pounds, so it will go through the body of these animals. This is a perfect tool for. Uh, shooting birds out of trees, particularly at low light. You want to make sure you kill your bird. This is a fairly impressive animal. This is what was making all that noise. We set ourselves up tonight right underneath this canopy of trees here. So when they were coming in they were flying straight and landing almost directly above us. So most of my shots would have gone straight in the bottom of the chest and through the out this through the and out the other side. This is the first time I've done anything like this. All in all, I've nabbed 11 birds before it got dark. They're a lot wilier than ferals in a barn. If I get another chance like this, I'll do it differently, fine-tuning my position and the game plan. Now ideally, we need to have two or three men shooting this wood. It's a long, thin wood, which means that if one of us takes a shot, it kind of pushes the birds onto the next man, and so on and so on and so forth. But as it happens, that's a pretty good bag, that's 11 birds. It's certainly not going to knock a huge hole in the 20,000 or so that Andy says come into this roost every night, but it's a pretty good start. So Team Wild needs to book a ticket for the return leg, 
and the best chance of making a dent in the thousands of birds coming home to roost. For more information about the Nightsight NS200, visit nightsight.co.uk. For more information about the Daystate Mark IV IS, visit daystate.co.uk. Team Wild will be back next Wednesday. Visit www.teamwild.tv.